Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kairos and welcome back once again to Let's Play Silent Hunter 4. We just finished sinking that uh, small convoy last episode, which was very successful indeed. Far more successful than I uh, ought to be, really, at this time in the war. But uh, that's fine. Um, so now we have to get through this passage up here. Uh, Sibutu Passage, I think it's pronounced. And this is a potentially dangerous area because if a warship comes through here, there's very little room to manoeuvre. So we've got to get through there, which is the first thing to do. Hopefully we won't have any any trouble. And then we're going to uh, we're going to go up for the, through the Sulla Sea. I think I might take the safe route and cut uh, through this strait here, the Mindoro Strait. There you go. And then straight up to our grid, which is all the way up here, past Luzon. So this is going to be a very very dangerous place to be. We've got an airfield over there, and of course we've got an airfield over here. And these um, these aircraft, oh, and another one here too, although I think this one's out of range, more or less. Um, but anyway, this is going to be a hot spot for Japanese shipping, so uh, this could be a very interesting episode. But we need to get up there first, and let's, uh, let's concentrate on doing that. I'll let you know if we have any action along the way. Okay, well, we are at periscope depth, and we're going to stay at periscope depth because we have reached the passage, and obviously I don't want to be anywhere near um, the surface while we go through there. Uh, you can see we're getting along at head standard. I think I'll stay at a head standard. I'd like to get through there as quickly as possible. Um, those propellers are getting along quite fast, but I don't think we're likely to get heard in this weather. It's pretty stormy up there, so we'll continue along at head standard for as long as we can and I'll slow down if we need to save battery power. But uh, what was I going to do? Oh yes, map. So we are here. Um, so we've got 30, about 35 miles to cover uh, before we get, well maybe a little bit more just to be safe, probably about 40 miles to cover at uh, periscope depth just so that we don't um, get spotted by anyone that could possibly be around here. It's a very clear day up there and I'm just not I'm just not going to risk it. So I'll let you know if we pick up anything along here. That's the other advantage of being at periscope depth. We can hear if there are any ships in the area. So uh, I'll let you know if we uh, if we have trouble. Otherwise, I will continue out of the passage and I'll get I'll get back to you once we're in the Solar Sea. Okay, we've got through the Sibutu Passage here, which is fantastic. I've just surfaced the boat. The men were getting a little bit hot and sweaty down there. We needed some air. Um, but now we have to head through the Solar Sea and up through this strait here, which is going to be um, a bit hairy as well. Um, I might do this at periscope depth as well, because this is going to be a hot spot for enemy shipping. Then I'm going to, as you can see, cut um, more or less almost due, um, due west, because I want to avoid the airfield here. So as tempting as it is to go into Manila and see if we can catch anything, nope, it's not going to happen. We're going to skirt out this way and then go uh, straight up to the Luzon Strait. So that's the plan for the course. Uh, I'll probably let you know when we get about here, where my cursor is, just when we, uh, we're off uh, Panay. Um, so we can um, think about going to periscope depth again to make sure we don't get sunk. Well, it's currently um, May 17th, and as you can see just by the way this boat is moving, it's pretty, uh, pretty rocky out there. But the men are doing a good job. I'm pretty happy with their performance. Uh, they're not getting tired or anything like that. That's uh, more of a Silent Hunter 3 problem. So um, we can concentrate on going to periscope depth now, I think, because we are in an area where we should be thinking about, yeah, staying quiet and staying low. Obviously, I won't stay at periscope depth the whole time. We're not going to make this in one go. We're going to have to surface uh, during the night. Um, so we can get some air and charge our batteries and so on, but I'd like to play it safe along here. Now, we did get some convoy reports. I'll just pop this up so you can see. Um, there's some stuff there you can read about reports, but they're obviously pottering around here. You can see them there and there and the times that they were reported in. This is actually along the um, coast of the Philippines here is actually where I like to um, uh, to hunt along the east coast. I have a lot of success along here, so uh, 
that's a good spot. Also, Deval. When I'm um, in doubt, go to Deval Golf there, which is a fantastic hunting ground. But uh, for now, we have to obey our orders and head up to this uh, area in Luzon Straits. But um, I'm confident we'll get through here without any trouble. But on the off chance that we do get spotted, particularly by aircraft, it's better to play it safe. So I will continue on. Okay, I've just been having a think here about uh, where we're going to be patrolling around um, and what we might be shooting at. So if we look at 29 on this map here, 29, the Takao to Hong Kong route, I think that might be worth investigating. So when we do, I think this will be within our, our circle. So uh, we might uh, have a look at that. We want uh, 29, because you can see there that's dated from uh, 1942. And uh, possibly 17, 17, yes, 1942 to August 44, yep. So we might try and catch something coming out of, um, in and out of Takao, uh, which by now should be well and truly under Japanese control, and uh, ships will be coming in and out of here. So this, these routes here should be where we are looking. Um, but yes, let's get rid of that for now. We are getting closer, so uh, in a little bit we'll be at uh, grid, and so as you can see there, that's where we're going to be, um, going to be patrolling around. And uh, I'm hopeful, particularly along this route here, where my cursor is. Let's draw a line, shall we? Um, we should catch something coming between Hong Kong and Formosa. So that's that's where we'll be be hunting up here, just further north of this circle, I think being careful to avoid this shallow water in the process. Okay, we have an incoming radar contact and it's heading very fast, so I th think, I think we should crash dive. Uh, let's just test under the keel first, just to be sure. Yep, let's crash dive. This will be a good drill. It's not in visual yet, so it's not a huge, um, a huge problem, but it's better safe than sorry. That's why I'm glad we got radar. All right, bring her down, lads. That would be really quite nice. And down we go. These uh, boats really do dive slowly, but uh, we're down now. So let's um, let's just make sure that we're not uh, going to hit the bottom, shall we? Uh, let's just ease off. That's fine. It doesn't need to be too deep. They didn't see us. Slow down. And we'll stay in here for the rest of the day. Uh, obviously, they do send aircraft out this way, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. We'll, we will continue now to remain submerged during the day and take advantage of our hydrophone technology um, and just concentrate on listening out for ships, which means we might not be here for a couple more days yet, but that's all right. I don't mind. The Pacific Ocean is a big place and you just got to get used to long journeys, I suppose. Okay, it's uh, getting dark now, so I'm back on the surface. It is still pretty damn windy up here and incredibly rough but that's fine we are doing our thing and just paddling along I will show you where I am here we are okay uh, definitely in our grid and then as I said earlier I'm gonna try and concentrate on staying up up here because I think we're gonna get a lot of shipping coming along this this route here between um, Hong Kong and Formosa so we'll try that we will try to avoid the shallow water as much as possible but I am going to risk it just a little bit, you know, go in just a little bit, and uh, hopefully that way we can pick up something at least uh, on the hydrophone if we don't see anything, uh, and I'll let you know when we get a con uh, contact. Uh, otherwise, I'll just potter around here for five days. So if we don't see anything, you won't hear from me for five days. It's 21st of May, and we're supposed to patrol here uh, for five days until we're told, you know, Otherwise, I'll get new orders probably after this. Uh, we've got plenty of fuel left, as you can see. So uh, I'm not too worried at all about this situation. We've just got to watch out for aircraft. Otherwise, all is well. The US Navy sunk the light carrier Shoho and damaged the fleet carrier Shukaku and two enemy cruisers at the cost of the oil tanker Nyosho and a destroyer sunk. The Japanese Admiral Inouye was forced to postpone the planned invasion of Port Moresby. 
Okay, well, we've completed our objective here. Um, what's the time? Five o'clock. Nearly five o'clock. Twenty to five. Um, do I go up into the Foremost Strait? I think we will just let them know what uh, what we've been doing. So we'll send off a status report. Break radio. Uh, break radio silence. Sorry, I can't English today, as usual. Proceed to Area 11B and engage in anti-shipping operations within the designated area, East China Sea, for five days. So they want us to stay in the East China Sea. No surprises there. Where are they going to send us? Oh, there's a convoy report down there. I didn't notice that one. And another friendly or neutral ship actually over there. Warship. Uh, but we, ooh, East China... Oh, we were in the South China Sea, so we've got to go up to the East China Sea now. Interesting. Well, it looks like I'm going to get my wish. Let's be extremely cheeky. Again, far more risky than any real submarine commander at this point in the war would likely be prepared to... Um, you know, B. But let's cut across this shallow water here, being very careful to avoid any islands that might plague us. You can see there, they're kind of difficult to see, particularly at night on the map. So you really do need to keep an eye on this navigation thing. And we'll just go through the through the Formosa Strait. Why not? Just to say we've done it. We'll call it a propaganda uh, a propaganda trip. Um, we'll, we'll include it um, in the orders. We'll say that included in the orders were we were told to go through the Formosa Strait so we could brag about it to um, other crews. They can say, look, it can be done. You don't need to worry. And of course we're in shallow waters and it's daylight. So what am I going to do about this? Well, get rid of that. I think we'll stay on the surface because I don't want to risk hitting a mine. Um, I'd rather risk aircraft, which we can see, uh, than I would risk a mine, which we cannot see. So we'll stay up on the surface and hope that if there are any mines in the area, I doubt there are because this is a pretty hot spot for shipping. Um, let's just hope we don't blunder into one. Uh, if we go outside, this is slightly cheating, but I know it's shallow water because the crew has already told me. You can see there, that is not a lot of room to work with. So we've got to be very careful about this. Um, but I'm going to continue churning along at a head standard because I want to get out of here as quickly as possible. We don't have room to dive, really, if we... Um, I mean, we probably could, but I wouldn't want to risk it. We can at least go decks awash if we get an aircraft so uh, spotted. So, um, yeah, this could be problematic. Okay, we have a whole flock of aircraft coming in real fast from due east. Let's go to periscope depth. We can't crash dive. It's just too... It's too shallow here. This could be a problem. Let's see what... Once we start getting under, we'll test the depth under the keel and keep testing it. We're going to have to slow down as well. Um, depth under keel, please, is 41 feet, which means we can't go any deeper. Um, all right, let's go down to 30 feet and see how that looks. And... Um, what else do we need to do? We should actually not get spotted. They are going to be about... Mm, no, they might see us. We need to make sure we're, we're uh, low. Let's have a look in here. As you can see, I mean, with these waves particularly, we just don't have a lot of room to, to deal with. Let's slow down the boat. Yes, sir. We might have to fight this out. Let's continue going to periscope depth. Periscope depth. And um, I'll just call it off when, when we get too low. We'll keep testing the depth under the keel. Um, how much room have we got? They'll tell us. They'll actually warn us when we're running out of room. Slow right down. Just stop the engines. We'll slow the engines right down. Head one third. What's the depth under keel now? We should... Of course, in reality, we wouldn't be able to see outside, but we would have a lot of situational awareness because we have this thing, 14 meters. When we get down to 10 meters, 14, we might stop there. I think we're going to stop there. Let's see. Okay, that'll do. 12, yeah, that's enough. Let's um, make sure we're just straightened out at 53 feet apparently and we will um actually stop engines i think yes, sir. and just i don't i don't feel comfortable traveling um at this uh 
at this depth. Uh, we're just going to stop engines. We're going to let ourselves... In reality, what would happen is the submarine would probably sink to the bottom and just sit on the sand. And we're going to stay down here until it gets... Um, until it gets dark, basically. And listen, and listen carefully. We'll take the, um, the periscope up now and again. We'll put the periscope up now and again and just um, sit here because I do not want to risk crashing into anything in this shallow water and I do not want to risk being struck by aircraft. So here we shall sit and here we shall wait. Okay, as you can see, it's almost 7 o'clock now, and it's getting dark. It is extremely quiet down here, uh, almost frighteningly so. But we're almost ready to get underway, I think. Let's just have one more look in the periscope, just to make sure that uh, all is well. We have not moved for about, uh, oh, I don't know how many hours now, at least 8 hours. And... Looks like the horizon is going to be clear. They would be shouting at me if there was a ship nearby. Um, so it's worth checking in this weather, though, because it is a little bit choppy out there, and you never know, my hydrophone uh, officer might be asleep. We're running out of air, so I think it's time to get this boat underway. Okay, good news. We are most of the way through the Formosa Strait here. But we finally have a sound contact off the port bow bearing... Um, what was its bearing? It's a, yeah, three, four, seven degrees. So we have just gone ahead full and we're going to try and intercept. We are dangerously close to this airfield, but I'm not too concerned about it. It is dark after all, and very dark, I might add, out there. The seas are still choppy. But we can do this. I just got to basically keep an eye on this ship and try and work out which direction she's going. It looks like she's heading uh, towards Formosa, so we might actually continue on that course. And we'll just uh, keep an eye on her, see which way she's going. I'll try and get a speed as well, if I can, with the hydrophone. It's not a very exact science, but it's better than no estimation whatsoever. Um, and you never know, this might turn out to be a convoy. Uh, we only just got the report, so let's have a listen in here. Whereabouts are you? One. I think it's just the one ship. I think. But then maybe not. That's quite a wide arc. It might be a fleet, you know. Or a convoy. Anyhow, we'll uh, close in. And we'll see what we're dealing with. Four, three, two, one, zero. That's Mark. Uh, all right, that's her speed, three minutes. We have a visual, as you can see. Eight knots, I believe that. Back there with the hydrophone, we got eight and a half. So we're going to say eight knots. Now, I have stopped engines. I'm sure you can hear that as well. It's a very dark night out there, so this is going to be probably another surface uh, night attack because that worked out extremely well last time. <sighs> um, what did I just click? following plotted course. Let's not do that. Make sure those engines are stopped, please. All stop. All stop. Um, got to be careful what I click on. She's still quite a way out. We've got another... Yeah, she's still got another five kilometers out. So we're going to have to let it get a bit closer, but we will use the time to get ready. Uh, let's just test the depth under the keel, 400 meters, so we've got room to crash dive if we need to. And... What else do we need to do? Go to battle stations, yes. please. Yes, sir. General quarters, general quarters. All hands, man your battle stations. All hands, man your battle stations. I'll mark this as well. Aha. Uh -huh. Is it a whale factory ship? It might be, you know. I think it's a whale factory ship. 17,000 tons people that's definitely worth shooting at but we um you know i might i don't want to get spotted so i might actually go to periscope depth for this one we will see um no let's stay on the surface 
Let's stay on the surface and just let it get a bit closer. Because we can use the deck gun if we have to as well. It should be fantastic. Okay. So let's start actually doing this properly. This is what the bread and butter of the episode is about after all. It's the targeting. Um, angle on bow at the moment is about 50, apparently. I'm not sure I believe that, but okay. It's about 50. So let's go this to DC. Start getting some data. First thing we need is a... I think it's a whale factory ship, so let's enter that for now. And uh, we'll keep that up. Where is my... Where is my... There we go. TVC. That's what I want. Um, range. Mark. And bearing. Angle on bow. About 50. And yeah, we've got plenty of time. What I can do is go to this and check what her draft is. I think it is 23. So we're going to try the magnetics this time, even though I don't trust them. So I'll set them to... Um, and I know you can't see anything here, but take my word for it. There's a ship there with two stacks and a lot of... It looks like a big oiler of some form. But I think it's that whale factory ship. Let's set them for 20. This is where we're probably going to get lots and lots of duds. But I'm going to be realistic and, and set them like so. We're going to fire all four. Let's set that one a little bit deeper. And this one also a little bit deeper. Because I don't trust these pistols. Actually, let's set this one up a little bit to 23. Because I don't trust those pistols at all. Um... We'll leave them on influence, all of them on influence. And we'll leave them on low, because if they're going slowly, they're more likely to um, to detonate, I think. Um, all right, we've still got miles away. She's miles away yet, so we've got plenty of time to just have a think about this and get a good solution. I'll cut here for a little while and let her drift a little bit closer. I think we are probably, I, I don't think we should risk getting any closer. Let's do this properly. And uh, I should probably put men on the deck gun as well. Um, no, I'll leave them there for now. If we need them, we can take a few shots at her and slow her down. Um, and we can make an attack with the stern tubes. Right, let's do this. She must be closer by now. Yeah, I think we can hit that. Angle on the bow is 75. That's about right. Let's put a little bit more. Perfectionist when it comes to these things. There. Range. Mark. Speed. We need a couple more seconds. Range. Mark. Let's open these tubes. We're going to fire all four. Open tubes one, two, three, and four. Speed, eight, that is definitely a solution. Let's keep that. Let's take a look in this. That's perfect. We're still moving, just slowly. All stop. That is spot on. If we miss this, it's going to be the torpedo's fault. All right. Fire one. Fire two. And let's give these a bit of a spread, as I like to do. To the left, let's put one, two to, one degree to the left. Fire three. Once that's away, which I think it is. There we go. Fire four. Ooh, now this is going to be interesting. Let's go have a look out here. Get rid of that Get damn clock. See, we're not that far out. There will be torpedoes under here somewhere. There's one. It's 
off. And there's our ship all the way out there. So, we just gotta wait now. Play the waiting game. This should not take too long. Let's look on this map. Okay, they're looking good so far. They're looking good. They're gonna take a while to get to their target, of course, because, um, sorry, that's me bumping the microphone. My bad. They're looking good. They're on their way to their target, all right. And um, I think this is going to be a hit if we don't have any problems with the torpedoes, of course. I set them for the correct depth for this ship. It's definitely a whale carrier thing, whale factory ship. 17,000 tons. That's all it could possibly be. And that is an absolutely perfect solution we got there for it. So if these don't go off, it's the torpedo's fault. Absolutely. Let's have a look on deck. Look, we've, we've planned this absolutely perfectly. Uh, we should be getting a detonation any moment. Let's have a look one more time in here. They're coming closer. Yeah, they're going to be hits. I find them a little too close together in my opinion. In reality, you want to give a bit of room between your torpedoes because obviously a detonation of one will set off the other. So, um, we're going to get hits approximately now. Let's go up on deck and watch this. Let's see. Oh no. That's one hit. Beautiful. Look at that. Two. Did we get three? There was a delay, of course, as uh, I set the... the, um angle off differently, but no, three impacts and an explosion. Brilliant work. That's how it's done, people. And we'll be getting one more. Yep, right on the bow. Any more explosions? Well, if that's not enough to send her down, I don't know what will. Flame, explosions. Yeah, she's done for. Fantastic. Yep, she's on fire. She's going down. She's going down. Didn't take long at all. She caught fire and... Oh my. That does not look good. <laughs> that does not look good. That fire is spreading. Explosions. Yep. Goodbye, ship. Brilliant work, people. We can actually stand down from battle stations now. Uh, she's not going to last long. I love the way they leave a trail of fire behind them, if they're oilers. It's fantastic. So that's great. We can uh, just start the engines again and, and think of getting out of the way of this, um, just in case she's got a, some kind of escort somewhere around. But fantastic. Right, and the good news is, I was right. That was a whale factory ship. Almost 18,000 tons of shipping just went plummeting to the bottom. And uh, the date is May 28th, 1942, and that is a great catch. I feel like uh, the sports fisherman who uh, takes home the biggest marlin. So, uh, <laughs> good results. I'm very happy with that indeed. Um, still enjoying the mod, but uh, I just wish it was a little bit more difficult because this game is just handing me these big ships and no dud torpedoes. It's uh, it's all very simple, really. Of course, I say that, and I'll probably hit a mine next episode or something like that. Hopefully that won't happen. But anyway, I will call the episode to a close here. Uh, I think that's a good spot to, to stop. Uh, this has been Kairos. I hope to see you all in the next episode. Thanks for viewing.